Hi friends! Welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany where I have new videos every week about books and the geeky mom lifestyle. In today's video I'm going to be sharing with you my slightly excessive October book haul. It is almost the end of October and it was time for me to film a book haul video and I started gathering all the books together and I was like, oh... I bought a lot of books this month and part of it is because I had a bunch of pre-orders. In fact, I have like nine or ten pre-orders plus other stuff and things that were sent to me. So I have a lot of books to share this month. <laughs> it's fine. Everything is fine. Was it a stressful month and did I go book shopping as a result? Probably yeah but honestly it is all stuff that i really wanted to have and i don't regret any of it so we are going to go ahead and dive in i've got books i purchased for myself i've got a bunch of pre-orders i've got some stuff that was sent to me for review we're gonna get into all of it but first a word from our sponsor today's video is sponsored by vaunt innovations are you an avid reader do you sometimes find yourself unable to put down that newest thrilling book does this become a problem when your partner wants to go to sleep and you're still up reading? Well, if so, then you are in luck because Vaunt Innovations has created the LED clip-on reading light. As with all Vaunt products, this does come with a lifetime warranty and can charge via USB, which makes this very convenient and doesn't require annoying battery replacement. Not only that, but this clip-on reading light features a slick touch switch featuring three levels of light intensity that you can adjust to suit your preference. Use the high mode for reading in the daytime, then shift to low for a low profile night lamp to read without disturbing your partner. Problem solved. If you're interested in getting your very own LED clip on reading light, which easily clips to whatever book you happen to be reading, you can use the link down below and the code BEAUTY10BB to get 10% off your purchase. Now you can read all the way through to that final twist ending. Thank you so much to Vaunt Innovations for sponsoring this video. I think this reading light is actually pretty cool. It is energy efficient, it's made in the United States, it has a lifetime warranty, and it's super useful if you're an avid reader like myself, especially when you're reading something that's keeping you up late at night. With that said, let's go ahead and dive into the book haul. And I will start with my stack of pre-orders. <laughs> Guys, pre-orders. These are all pre-orders. What happened? Everything got pushed to October and all the books that I wanted to pre-order came out in October. A couple of these I pre-ordered like months and months ago though, so I didn't necessarily pay for all of these this month, but let's see. Okay, so I have nine pre-orders to talk about today. Oof, let's dive in. First up, if you guys remember way back in April when I did the Social Distance Book Fest, I moderated a panel with some incredible fantasy authors and this first pre-order is from that. I actually pre-ordered it way back in April. So this is The Jealousy of Jealous by Jesse Nolan Bailey. This is his debut indie published adult fantasy that sounded really interesting and so I grabbed a copy. It came out in paperback. It's a darker fantasy with political intrigue and strong female characters, so one that I'm looking forward to checking out. That finally came in. Then, guys, I mean you know I had to get this. I got The Lives of Saints by Libra Dugo. I am such a sucker for books like this and also it's so, so pretty. Apparently this matches the cover of the actual book in Shadow and Bone that they used. Lives of Saints is mentioned in the Grisha trilogy and this is just a stunning collection of stories from within the Grishaverse world with illustrations that are beautiful about the Lives of Saints. This is just such a cool, really pretty book and I was like, yeah. I clearly need that in my life. So, you know, I was good. I didn't get the special edition of Shadow and Bone. I was very tempted to. I just got this one. So, it's fine. <laughs> then I had two books where I read the e-arcs of them before they came out and loved them so much that I clearly needed to go out and buy myself physical copies. If you haven't heard me talk about these yet, I will link my mid-month wrap-up up above where I mention both of them. But first up we have Beyond the Ruby Veil vale by Mara Fitzgerald. This is so freaking good. I loved it and I was like, yes, please give me a finished copy. And also where is book two because I need it. This is a 
freaking amazing <laughs> debut YA queer fantasy story that's like a dark fantasy and I don't want to tell you too much about it but I loved everything about this book. It's got twists and turns. I could not put it down. It's not a very long book but it's such a page turner. It's got a really interesting world. It's got strong characters. One thing that I do think is going to be a little bit controversial about this is that our main character is definitely the unlikable female character which some people are not a fan of. She's pretty self-centered and selfish and highly ambitious and like I got such a kick out of her and really really enjoyed her dynamics so yeah clearly I needed to buy a copy. Then again no surprise probably to anybody but I bought a finished copy of Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade, another new favorite. I think this is the best of its kind in terms of romances with good fat representation that I've seen plus it has a lot of tropes that I really love. It's got more of a slow burn relationship, it's got fandom elements to it and if you haven't I, I, I won't gush too much about this because we have a lot of books to talk about but if you haven't heard me gush yet go watch my mid-month wrap-up I gush about this a whole lot it's just it's great it was like everything that I wanted then I <laughs> one that now I'm like a little nervous about so we're gonna see how it goes I'm planning to read this pretty soon but I did pre-order the Owl Crate special edition of A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik which is her Dark Academia book there have been some oh, things coming out about it of being possibly kind of racist and she issued an apology for one thing that she put in after having done the sensitivity readers but there are some other concerns so I am planning on reading it and it is a stunning addition but um, now I'm nervous so we'll see how that goes but I will say this is beautiful it doesn't have a dust jacket here is the spine here is the back uh, it has gold sprayed edges it has um, a ribbon bookmark. It has stunning end papers. I mean, this whole thing is absolutely gorgeous. It's got this really cool signed tip in page and a letter from the author. I mean, this is a stunning addition. I will be so bummed <laughs> if it's not good. So I really hope it still has like value and is worthwhile, but there have been some mixed reviews. So we'll see. I'll let you guys know how it goes. It did also come with I can find it. And the special edition did also come with this really cool enamel pin. It says Mana and Malia, like a limited edition pin. <sighs> Guys, this is what I get for pre ordering something I've not read, <laughs> but I really love everything else I've read from her, so we'll see. Ugh. But it's, it, it, it's really beautiful. Then I also pre ordered One More for Christmas by Sarah Morgan. The last couple of years I'd gotten her Christmas books for free from the Harlequin publicity team and this year they're, they weren't featuring one of her books and I was like, oh, I guess I need to go buy it myself. Um, I love Sarah Morgan. I've talked about her a lot on here. I think her characters are among the best out there. She writes women's fiction with some romance thrown in and always has a holiday book come out around Christmas. This one is about two sisters who are estranged from their mother and she's trying to reconnect with them around the holidays and they agree to have Christmas together. She basically did really well with her career but because of the way that she managed things with her daughters really pushed them away but now a recognition of her own mortality is forcing her to try to change things and so I'm looking forward to it. Her books are always really good, great characters, great family dynamics and I'm sure it's going to be a good holiday read. Then this was kind of a last minute thing that I saw and I was like oh I love this author I'm totally going to support her um, but I pre-ordered Dread the Harvest Moon by Sarah Glenn Marsh. I love Sarah Glenn Marsh. I think her books are really underrated. She wrote Reign of the Fallen, the first in a duology that was fantastic and this is a companion novel to her debut which you're going to see later in this book haul that I have not read and so I picked that up as well but I guess it had been long enough since that came out she decided to self-publish this companion novel that looks really good. It's spooky, it has a sapphic romance in it and it just sounds really great. It says three tasks, two worlds, one deadly queen. When responsible rule-following Lys Corkill accidentally interferes in a fairy queen's quest for love. She's pulled into the vast and dangerous world of Unman, a magical realm as old as the Isle of Man itself. 
As punishment for her mistake, Lys must complete three tasks for the queen by the night of the Great Harvest Moonlight, the fairy's biggest celebration. But even with powerful friends like the town witch on her side, the tasks seem impossible. Lys will lose everything she loves if she can't own who she is and make some new rules. Um, so yeah, this looks really great. Also, because I pre-ordered it, I got this really cool signed book plate and a bookmark and this really cool character art. Can we just appreciate? It's freaking awesome, right? So um, yeah, congrats to Sarah, and I think she's got another exciting book that she just announced, so excited to have that. And then also, probably unsurprisingly, I have Lightbringer by Claire Legrand. This is the final installment in the Imperium trilogy, which I absolutely adore. Furyborn was book one. It was a favorite of the year when I read it. Book two was a favorite of the year when I read it last year. I just, I love, love, love this series. And I'm really excited to see how she's going to rip all of our hearts out in <laughs> book three. Um, these are epic YA fantasy leaning towards the older end of YA with strong female characters, messy female characters, and I love them a whole lot. So yay! Final book. This completes my trilogy. Now I just need to like read this one. Yeah, very happy to have that. Okay, and then my final pre-order, which I blame on Kayla from Books and Lala because I probably wouldn't have pre-ordered this. I would have tried to get to it eventually, but hearing her talk about it made me think, oh, I might actually love this way more than I thought. And that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab or Victoria Schwab. This is, also it's really pretty. I mean, really pretty end papers. You can't, I don't know if it shows up on here, but it's got like imprints of birds on the front cover. So the book itself is beautiful. This follows a girl over hundreds of years who basically makes a deal with the devil that gives her immortality in return for nobody remembering her until one day somebody does. And like on its face, things across time like that don't always suck me in just as a basic plot. But hearing Kayla talk about it and how it's very character driven and thoughtful and slow burn, I was like, okay, this sounds like something I might love. And I'm really excited for it. So I went ahead and pre-ordered it. And it's very beautiful. So I'm, I'm not mad about it. All right, next, let's talk about the books that were sent to me this month for review. And then we'll talk about the other books that I bought for myself that were not pre-orders. <laughs> okay. First up from Tor, we have The Hellion by S.A. Hunt. This is book three in the Malice Domestica series. I have already read this and I do talk about this in my mid-month wrap-up. So if you want to hear more detailed thoughts, you can check it out there. While this wasn't entirely my brand of horror, I really like what the author is trying to do here. And I think she's offering a really interesting voice in horror. This one is a paranormal horror series following a punk YouTuber who is a witch hunter and hunts witches on her YouTube channel. It's very dark and gritty and gruesome. And this one specifically tries to tackle domestic violence through horror, which I think is interesting conceptually. So thank you to Tor for sending me that. Then Disney Books and Big Honcho Media sent me a book. I was thrilled when they reached out because I was like, yes, I already have a neck alley arc of that and wanted to read it. So yes, please send me a finished copy. This is The Mirror, Broken Wish by Julie C. Dow. You all know I rave about Julie C. Dow. Uh, Forest of a Thousand Lanterns is an all-time favorite book for me. I really, really love it. And this is so interesting. It's the first book in a new series from Disney. Each book will be written by a different YA author, and it's following a cursed family across generations. Book one is sort of setting the stage for where that curse comes from and what will happen in the future. And then other authors are going to write future books starting next year. This one is set in 1800s Germany, and I think it's really interesting. There's a lot I like thematically about it. The first third of the book I absolutely loved. And then the last part of the book I liked but didn't love. Although I think a lot of that just has to do with the fact that this is a YA book and the later part of the book reads like it was written for teenagers and I probably wouldn't have been bothered by the things that bothered me if I was actually a teenager reading it. Um, so just kind of an FYI but I think this is really interesting and I'm super excited to see where the series goes. This one was kind of cool because it, um, it came with a mirror. I'm, I'm not gonna like turn it because it's gonna look weird with the camera, but it came with a mirror and the package that they sent it in had backwards 
text so you had to use the mirror to read it which I just thought was really fun and cool packaging given what the book is about that was just cool. Then Quirkbooks sent me some stuff that I'm pretty excited about. We have The Fangirl's Guide to the Universe, a handbook for girl geeks by Sam Maggs, and the accompanying Fangirl's Journal for Leveling Up, Conquer Your Life Through Fandoms, also by Sam Maggs. Um, these are awesome. First of all, can we just appreciate the cover? I love it. I love the diversity. I love the body diversity, and it's just awesome. As a girl geek myself, I am such a fan of this. Oh, and it came with really cute stickers too. <laughs> <laughs> that was really fun. I need to take a picture of these actually for Instagram. Um, but it's got really cute end papers and it's got stuff about like cosplay and going to conventions and tips and it's just, it's really cool. I think this is awesome. And the accompanying journal is also really cool. It's got all of these different fandom related things with different prompts and activities um, that are just really fun. So create your online avatar, my deepest, darkest fan hole. I just, I kind of love this. Let me know if you would be interested in seeing me do a thing where I actually go through this and journal with it because this, this seems really, really fun. So go check them out. I think these look amazing. Also, what a cool like gift package for the, the teen fangirl in your life come holiday season or the not teen fangirl because these are just super fun. So thank you to Quirkbooks. Those are great. Then I got an unexpected package that was kind of a pleasant surprise from Glasstown Entertainment. This is Hush by Dylan Farrow. And I mean, this is a really, oh geez. So this is Hush by Dylan Farrow. I think this is her first novel and the book itself is super cool looking. I mean like the end papers underneath. I had seen this around social media but I, I didn't know they were sending it to me but it looks very very intriguing. I, I didn't quite put it together right away but Dylan Farrow if her name sounds familiar is the sister of Mia Farrow, the daughter of Woody Allen and for I think maybe obvious reasons she's ended up becoming an activist in the Me Too movement and so this book sounds super interesting. It's a YA fantasy. It says they use magic to silence the world. In the land of Montaigne, language is literal magic to the select few who possess the gift of telling. This power is reserved for the bards, a group that has almost always been men. Who will break the hush? And of course the main character is a teen girl. I think conceptually this is super interesting. I've been hearing, seeing a lot of praise of it and so thank you to Glastown Entertainment for sending that and they also sent along a cool bookmark, and um, a signed little note from Dylan Farrow, which is kind of cool. So thank you, Glasstown Entertainment. If that sounds interesting, go check it out. I am hoping to read this one in November. And the final book that was sent to me this month is from an indie author. This was sent to me for review. This is going to be going on my November TBR. That is Pleasant Grove by Jason Price. It's a self-published middle grade book that sounded very much up my alley, so I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of excited to get to this. It says, Welcome to Pleasant Grove, a quiet small town where neighbor helps neighbor and doors are left unlocked at night. An unspoiled paradise with one peculiar feature. It's enclosed by a glass dome. No one can leave. No one can enter. No one can survive beyond the dome. But then, a visitor arrives from outside. Uh, yeah, so I'm really excited for this. I hope it's as, as, it's good. I mean, the premise is super intriguing, so check it out if you're interested or wait and hear what I think in November when I will be reading it. All right, Whew, man, I told you this was gonna be a long book haul, guys. <laughs> I did a lot of purchasing. Okay, next, before we get to the rest of the books that I purchased, although I also actually technically purchased these for myself, but um, I, Book of the Month Club, Last month I skipped because I wasn't super interested in owning any of the picks. Well, this month I more than made up for it because I got two add-on books. So if you are interested in joining Book of the Month Club, I do have a link down below where I get a free book if you join. I really like them as a service. I think they offer an interesting and diverse array of books. It's $15 a month, including shipping for a new release or sometimes pre-release hardcover. And you can add up to two add-on books for $10 each. And like I did last month, if you don't like any of the titles, you can skip and keep your credit for the following month, which I think is a great feature. Okay, so what did I get? So my official pick for October 
was Ties That Tether by Jay Nigaro. This looks super interesting. It's a debut book by a Nigerian author who immigrated to Canada when she was pretty young and likewise the main character in this book immigrates from Nigeria and ends up in a relationship with a white guy but is having to decide how to handle that with her family and with expectations and all of the things that that means. This sounds super interesting. I'm not sure if it's a genre romance, like I don't know if it has a happy, happily ever after ending, but I'm really interested in what this is exploring in terms of identity and interracial relationships. Clearly this was going to be my pick. I'm really excited to read this. I am on the waitlist for the audiobook from my library, so probably I will get to that sometime relatively soon when that comes through. Then I grabbed two add-ons. First up, I've been seeing reviews of this and so I was convinced that I should try it. I got Piranesi by Susanna Clark. Susanna Clark is the author of Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, which I watched the miniseries and I liked it. I have not read the book partly because it's so long, but this is not. It's very short. I hear it's really good and integrates Greek mythology into it, so we're gonna give that a try. And then lastly, I got One by One by Ruth Ware. I had somebody asking because they didn't think this was one of the options. It's It wasn't one of the five picks, it was just exclusively as an add-on that you can get this, but I've been really enjoying Ruth Ware. My friend Mario Books Like Whoa read this and really loved it as an isolated closed circle murder mystery, and yeah, so I was like, yes, let me add that to my collection because Ruth Ware is becoming maybe an autobi author for me. I, I really enjoy her. So there you go. Those are the three books that I grabbed from Book of the Month Club this month. All right, and then lastly, I have a stack of other books that I bought for various reasons. First, I will show you the four books that I bought at Barnes & Noble this month. I took a trip to Barnes & Noble because I wanted to go book shopping and I did a reel from Instagram. So if you follow me over on Instagram, you can see some of the reels that I did from that, including the books that I'm about to show you. But uh, I have read two of these books already, so not adding quite so many to my TBR. I decided to grab a copy of Would I Lie to the Duke by Eva Lee. I really, really loved this. This whole series so far has been fun and wanted to own it, plus it'll be useful to have on hand for a video that I'm doing in the future. This is a series of historical romances loosely inspired by 80s teen movies, which is really fun conceptually. And this book features a dominant heroine and a sexually submissive hero. So if you're looking for that in your historical fiction, not always easy to find, but this is one that I would recommend. Quite mild, but I, I liked it. I thought it was good. The other one that I bought that I've already read is White Fox by Sarah Faring. I've talked about this. I had a New York of it. I clearly wanted to own a finished copy. I really, really like Sarah Faring, and I think this book is going to appeal to a lot more people. Also, just check out the spine because the spine is really cool. It's like a film strip. It's like a film strip, which is appropriate. If you're looking for something spooky with gothic vibes and twists and turns and family secrets, this could be a good one to check out this fall. Then I picked up two books that I have not read but have been wanting to read. First is The Widow of Rose House by Diana Biller. You might have seen this make an appearance on my gothic book recommendations video. This was one where I said I had not yet read it but was meaning to and had recently acquired it. Here it is. <laughs> it's a gothic romance that apparently has a cinnamon roll hero, which I am always a fan of, so definitely looking forward to reading this in the near future. And then lastly, partly because it was on sale as like a YA book club pick from Barnes & Noble and because it was something that looked super interesting that I'd had my eye on anyway, I grabbed a copy of The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Actually, I'm going to take off this sticker. I'm trying to remember how they pitched this. It was like the Westing game meets Clue, I think, or something like that. Regardless, it looks super fun and like something I would enjoy, so grabbed a copy of that. Then, as I mentioned earlier, I did go ahead and get a copy of Fear of the Drowning Deep by Sarah Glenn Marsh. This one comes before the new book that I had pre-ordered, because this is one from her that I had not yet read, so I decided to grab that. And yeah, this is another one that would be perfect for this time of year. It's a spooky read set in 1913 with haunting memories, and I don't know if it's a ghost story or not, but... I'm excited. It looks like fun. Then, because I'm kind of already getting into this holiday romance kick, I bought a couple of holiday romance novellas. First is one that I have already read, but I wanted to own a copy, and that is A Kiss for Midwinter by Courtney Milan. 
I, I'm just basically becoming a Courtney Milan fangirl. That's pretty much what's been happening this year, and I think this is a fantastic holiday novella. I love her historicals. She, they're so smart. They're smart and well written and have interesting thematic content. She has strong, intelligent heroines and heroes who are great and strong but not alpha male and I'm just a fan of that. So Kiss for Midwinter for sure. And then one that I have not yet read is The Earl's Christmas Pearl by Megan Frampton. This was another one that came up when I was searching for holiday novellas and this one looked like fun. A duke's daughter, an irresistible earl, and an energetic corgi named Mr. Shorty. What more could you want in a Christmas novella by Megan Frampton? Uh, so yeah, this sounds fun. I wanted this Christmas. Holidays are coming guys. Holidays are coming. Okay, two more books to share. First up, after I finished Spoiler Alert, I thought, well, I clearly need to dive into Olivia Dade's backlist. So I went ahead and ordered Teach Me, which is one of her self-published books that I've heard two people now talk about and in ways that make me think that I would enjoy this. Another one with a plus size heroine. I love the cover on this. And this one is a workplace romance between a high school teacher and an administrator. So that one should be good. And then finally, I bought myself something off my own wish list. I have a reason for it, guys. It's for a video, sort of. Before the movie comes out, I am planning to reread Dune by Frank Herbert. And so I thought, what better opportunity to buy myself this stunning, <laughs> special edition version of it that I have been wanting for like a year. <laughs> so I decided to go ahead and buy it. I mean, how gorgeous is this book? It has teal sprayed edges. It has beautiful end papers. It on here it says fear is the mind killer. It's got a cool spine and a back and artwork on the dust jacket. I just love this so so much. So there you go, adding that to my collection of special edition books. I loved this. This is something that not everybody does, but it is definitely a major classic of science fiction. And I'm curious to go back and read it. The first time I read it, I read it with my husband when we were dating. And so I have a lot of nostalgia and positive memories associated with it. And there were a lot of great conversations that came out of it. But before the movie comes out, I am planning on doing a reread. So it's a splurge, I know, but look how pretty it is. <laughs> Okay, there you go. The many books that I have bought <sighs> this month. So much for trying not to buy too many books. That just kind of went out the window. <laughs> kind of went out the window this month. I will try to be much more careful about my book buying for November because yeah, it was a lot. But there were so many pre-orders. Anyway, um, it is what it is a lot they're all things that I'm very excited for and happy to have and either I've already read them and wanted to own them or things that I'm hoping to read relatively soon there you go talk to me in the comments down below let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything that I talked about today and for your question of the day let me know what is the last book that you splurged on like a thing that was on your wish list where either somebody else got it for you or you splurged on it for yourself Dune is a great example. Although actually, <laughs> I'm, I may or may not have a thing coming for next month that was also a big splurge, but we'll talk about that next month. <laughs> talk to me in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.